Sustainable design is about being able to achieve a beautiful living or working environments where the buildings really have a very low impact on the environment. Zero emission houses don't need to look a particular way or some preconceived idea of what a green home needs to look like. I think it's very much up to the individual architects. My name is Diego Beckenstein. As project director, I've worked with a number of different people from our office at John Model Architects to create this home. Turak is to the southeast of Melbourne in close proximity to the CBD and we are here together in Wurundjeri land of the Kulin Nation. The site was actually vacant when we were first approached to look at the project and I think this was one of the things that Kate and David really enjoyed, that it gave them lots of possibilities. They wanted a beautiful contemporary home with spaces for themselves, their children and their grandchildren, as well as interstate guests. But probably what fascinated us as an office was this incredible agenda for sustainability that they brought to the project and which was very unique. Our office is part of Architects Declare, which is really seeking to make sure that we can inform our clients about all the options and possibilities that are open to them that allow us to really get to low and body carbon solutions in our buildings as soon as we possibly can. A living building challenge is a really rigorous standard and was one of the two sustainability agendas that were chosen. In relation to energy, and this goes to the generosity aspect of the living building challenge, the home is effectively working off grid. So it must generate all its own power. It must actually dispose of all its own uh, wastewater. It must harvest all its own water as well. So it's really self-sufficient. Passive House is an engineering standard and it really aims to create a building that requires a very minimal amount of energy in its general use, but in particular with its heating and cooling requirements. So very significant amounts of high performance insulation in the walls and the roofs and floors, a glazing which is very high performing, in this case triple glazed, and with a passive house that's incredibly well sealed, it's fundamentally important to achieve excellent shading systems. On this house, this is achieved through motorised Venetian blinds along all north, east and west facing windows. And the courtyard itself actually has a bespoke system of operable timber louvers at roof level, which can be adjusted throughout the year in order to allow more or less light deep into the house. What you don't see behind these walls is an air tightness barrier. And what that does is it limits the amount of air leakage. This is combined then with the passive house ventilation system that delivers fresh air at very slow speed all the time. By creating such an efficient envelope, we've actually managed to be able to supply all the energy that we need for this project, plus create 5% more that gets exported back to the grid by having a small amount of PV cells on the roof. The Living Building Challenge has a requirement for food production on site. The Grounded Gardens did a beautiful job of incorporating edible ground covers and um, we actually designated a whole space upstairs on a terrace for grow beds. We decided on a scheme of really two materials, a stone and a timber. And the reason for this was to create a very calming and natural environment. And other materials such as the concrete bench tops or the Queensland siltstone that's on the floor have a very similar tonality. The other interior material is a hydrowood oak, a really interesting material in terms of its history. A lot of the trees that have been used were in a valley that was flooded for a hydro project in the 1940s. These trees are now being harvested, they're being air dried and then kiln dried to produce really quite pristine and beautiful timber. And we have also used it on really bespoke pieces, such as the dining table, which was made very specifically for this project for Kate and David. Other than these two significant materials of stone and timber, there was probably a really strong focus on having things that were made by hand. So for example, the rattan screen to the upper level balustrade woven on site by Angelo from Campbell Cane. As part of our proposition to Kate and David, we proposed that their house would float 
above this sea of native grasses. Working with Grounded Gardens, a landscape architect, they developed this beautiful scheme of uh, native planting. I really enjoy seeing those grasses softly waving in a really stark contrast to the strength and rigidity of the limestone building. We've been able to deliver a beautiful home that meets our client's brief and at the same time it has such an incredibly minimal touch on the environment so it's doing so much and yet its impact is so minimal.